today, I'm gonna just cut right to the chase and talk to you about my favorite horror movie, The Thing. The Thing is just one of those once in a lifetime type movies and I believe it's John Carpenter's best film. Younger me was really drawn to the grotesque special effects and the sound design, but as I've gotten older I find myself drawn not only to those things but also to the pacing, the setting, and the tone. To me, the film is an absolute masterpiece and a masterclass in every regard. Now, up until recently I had no idea that The Thing even received a sequel. I knew about the 2011 prequel movie, which is a topic for another video, but after doing a little research, yeah, I found that there was a sequel made two decades ago that directly succeeded the events of the ending of the film. It's pretty cool, right? Well, in this video I plan on finding out if the game is worth your time and if it successfully builds on the story set by the film. This is The Thing. <laughs> The Thing released on August 20th, 2002 for PS2 and PC. It was released for Xbox two weeks later on September 3rd, 2002. All of my footage was captured from the PC version of the game. Now before I get into the story, I do want to mention that this game directly ties into the ending of the film. If you haven't seen The Thing yet and you're sensitive to light spoilers, please go ahead and skip ahead to the time you see on your screen. If you're not sensitive to spoilers, I'll briefly explain the first film and how it ties into the game. So in the film, a group of American researchers in Antarctica come across a dog that just so happens to be infected with a parasitic extraterrestrial life form. At the time, they don't know this of course, and it isn't until later that the creature reveals itself. The creature which they call the thing infects the host and then replicates, creating essentially what is a perfect clone if it's given time. Through a series of events that I won't spoil today, RJ McCready, played by Kurt Russell, and Childs, played by Keith David, are the only two survivors left. They decide between them that they want to destroy this creature before the rescue team arrives and has a chance to be infected as well. They believe they've done it and then the credits roll, unsure if either of them are infected but accepting their fate. The game picks up almost immediately after this, with you playing as US Special Forces is Captain J.F. Blake. You've been tasked with leading Bravo Company into the American base, while Alpha Team investigates the Norwegian base that was depicted in the 2011 film. Through the early sections of the game, you're learning about the events that transpired here before your arrival. It's cool to see the characters learning and reacting to events that you as the player have seen already, and having those unanswered questions from the film answered. So throughout the game, you're meeting different survivors, working on progressing through these bases and uncovering the truth behind the thing. The game attempts to expand the lore and add some further context to why these researchers were down here to begin with. I quite like that aspect of it, even if it was a bit at odds with the established lore in the film. John Carpenter officially endorsed the game as canon and even makes an appearance as one of the in-game characters you have to protect. Speaking of that, the thing is primarily a third-person shooter, but it does feature a squad mechanic that mixes things up a bit. You can't play as any of these people you meet, but they are added to your squad and you're able to give them simple commands like stay or follow, in addition to their class commands. Each character you meet will fit into one of three classes. Medic, engineer, or soldier. Medics give you and your squad unlimited heals, engineers are able to open certain doors that may reveal weapons and other supplies, and soldiers are the best equipped for combat. You're able to give any member of your squad a weapon, but it may be beneficial to give your soldier a better weapon than, say, a medic. Throughout my playthrough, every single member of my squad had a weapon and they were all very efficient with said weapons. When shit broke out, the enemies weren't much of a threat. However, the thing features a fear and a trust system that may derail your squad. The fear system works by making your squad squad members less accurate and less efficient when performing tasks when they're more afraid. Bloody rooms, dark corridors, enemies that you can hear but not see all increase their fear level. You can check on your squad status by looking at the squad screen. It doesn't exactly tell you how afraid they are, but you can look at their portraits on the screen to determine who's more terrified than others. Calm guys will look forward, alerted guys will kinda look left and right, and terrified members will dart their heads around quickly. If they're too afraid, they'll just shut down entirely and stop taking commands from you. I only had this happen happened once in my playthrough and all I ended up doing was pushing him out of the room he was in and everything was fine again. The trust system also plays a big part on whether or not your squad will take commands from you. If they don't trust you, they might even turn on you and attack you. I didn't have this happen in my playthrough, I was very careful about where I fired my weapon and I tried to keep their trust high enough to a point where they wouldn't turn on me. I also tried to keep my medics alive so they could keep the squad topped off on health at all times. Unfortunately though, there are times where members of your squad will be infected with the thing and you don't entirely know until it's too late. They'll turn on you 
and attack you like any other enemy in the thing. It's grotesque and I love it. It really helps capture that feeling from the film of who's a human and who isn't. Because just seconds before their transformation, they may have been firing at other enemies and helping you. You do have these syringes that will shatter if they're infected, but I didn't find them too useful. First off, they're pretty rare. And secondly, the thing reveals itself after the syringe breaks anyway. So either way, you're fighting a monster. The syringe just changes the timing in which this happens. I guess I got really lucky because none of my squad mates turned when we were in the middle of a firefight. And that's another thing with the game. There are plenty of firefights with different enemy types. I like to classify different enemies with different numbers. Your first tier of enemies can be defeated with just gunfire. These are your small crawler type enemies. They're also the most common. Even when I didn't have squad mates by my side, I found these enemies more of an annoyance than anything else. Your second tier of enemies are the more brutish types, the walkers, etc. They're more aggressive and take more shots to take down, but to finish them off, you have to kill them with fire. These also weren't too bad unless you were in a very enclosed space or you also had a bunch of tier one enemies, you know, taking shots at you. The third tier is exclusive to bosses. These usually involve some kind of puzzle to defeat or get by, but some bosses you fight the same way you fight a tier two enemy. They just hit way harder and way more aggressively. My problem with the bosses though stems primarily from the lack of a health bar and the hit registration. There were many times where I'd be fighting a boss that had tentacles that would come out and whip me, but I had no idea I was even in the line of fire until it was too late. The console version of the game has an aim lock on, which also gives you a health bar of whatever you're targeting, which would have been really useful on the PC, but I just couldn't figure out how to activate it. I basically went into every boss fight blind, which over time I sort of learned the ins and outs of, but still, that health bar would have made this process so much easier. Speaking on the difficulty, I played on normal and I found that the thing was a pretty balanced game, all things considered. I had a few BS deaths, especially later on from turrets and unseen explosions, but fighting enemies directly with a well-equipped squad felt satisfying and intuitive. I've seen this game described as a survival horror, and I disagree with that. I think it's more of an action horror game. As long as you take care of your squad and methodically move through levels, you will never have issues with ammo or health. There are so many enemies to kill as well that command your full attention. There were times where me and my squad were locked down in a room just blasting waves of enemies over and over again, chewing through our ammo reserves. There were certainly scenes where I had to sneak. There was one in particular where all of my weapons and equipment were taken from me and I had to use these security cameras to determine where this walker was so I didn't aggro him. After I activated an automated turret to attack him and lock him in place, I was able to find a medic who then healed an engineer that allowed me to enter the armory where I could stock up and kill the walker to proceed. I loved these segments in the thing. I just wish there were more of them. It's supposed to be a horror game, but I feel that it quickly falls off and becomes a pure action game in the second half. For story reasons, reasons I won't explain in this video, hostile soldiers are now on the base and they're looking to kill you and your squad. Any element of horror this game once had is quickly removed once these soldiers become the primary focus of the story. There are still thin creatures walking around and occasionally they'll fight the soldiers too, but again this just doesn't happen often enough and it completely kills the atmosphere that the game once had. In addition to this, the level design quickly changes from a more open one to a linear one, where you'll be walking down the same looking metal corridors from room to room just killing whatever enemy stands in your way. Around this time is also where you're met with environmental traps. There's one scene in particular that really made my blood boil. You're working your way down this winding pathway with these pipes that shoot steam out at a certain time on a loop. On top of this, you're fighting soldiers, which eat away at your health as soon as they lock onto you. Going another step further, there are turrets on almost every single wall when you turn a corner, so now you have to worry about those as well. Thankfully, I had a medic with me this entire scene and he kept me healed up as I couldn't avoid taking damage here. Even worse though is when you have to come back up this path later on in the game. The facility is exploding, so not only do you have to dodge the steam and fight the soldiers on the way up, but you have to avoid explosions, which due to poor hitboxes, I kept dying to. I found that by just sticking back and watching them explode, I was able to continue on. I'm not opposed to an action sequence in a horror game. I really like them actually. I think they break up some of the monotony in a lot of horror games. But when the game throws this sort of bullshit at you, it kills any sort of momentum you might have had up until that point. All in all, I think that just about settles it. So overall, what do I think of the Thing game? I believe it's a worthy sequel with some caveats, of course. The first half of the game where you're exploring the American and Norwegian bases is awesome. It captures that feeling of the film perfectly. Care. It's it dark, like gloomy, UFO, cold, and that danger looming see. overhead is constantly yeah, there. Yeah, now around yeah, the time they introduce the soldiers so is where the game yeah, really yeah, falls yeah. off and it never truly recovers from that. There are some okay scenes here and there, but it never returns to the heights of the early game. Just know that the game's second half is lackluster and you wouldn't be alone
alone and putting it down at that point if that's what you choose to do. The thing might not be the exact game I'm looking for, but for what it was, it was pretty solid. If you're a fan of the film like me, I recommend it 100%. It'll satisfy your expectations. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? You're missing out big time. I'm hurt bad. Thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and recommend my Saw video, which was another movie tie-in game I covered. I'm also going to recommend my Manhunt video, which was a stealth horror shooter, sort of like this game. As always, have a good one.